This week I read a quote from a man called William Ward. He said, if you flatter me, I may not believe you. If you criticize me, I may not like you. If you ignore me, I may never forgive you. But if you encourage me, I will never, ever forget you. Words of encouragement are very, very powerful. We are living in different days from just a few months ago. Um, our lifestyles have been completely turned upside down. When we turn our TVs on or read a newspaper, all we seem to see and hear from the latest news of the media is they seem to think that we need to hear some bad news that we need to hear some negative news uh, and there is very little in the way of encouragement it seems to be full of negative themes we are told this could happen this may happen very few words of encouragement that's why it was so good to see Captain Tom as he walked up and down his garden uh, making a great big statement that it is possible to make a difference in the times that we are going through. It kind of uplifted the whole nation. It made a big difference to the world that we were living in because there was something there could say yes we could be that kind of person today we all need words of encouragement we all need to be encouraged we all need to be encouraged encouragement is not a new thing it's been around for centuries our Heavenly Father has been speaking words of encouragement to his people through the Bible to anybody who would listen. In the book of Hebrews, he says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. In Deuteronomy 33, 27, we read these words. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath you are the everlasting arms. The, the words actually mean that he is your power, your strength, and your help. Jesus himself said incredible stuff when he said, no one can snatch you from my father's care. Psalm 34 verse seven tells us, the angel of the Lord stoops down to listen to our prayers and encircles us, empowering us Psalm 125 says the Lord's wraparound presence surrounds his people, protecting them now and forevermore. Over and over again, we read words that are placed there to bring encouragement to the reader. This theme of encouragement does not stop with our Heavenly Father. It has been given to us to follow in his steps and be encouragers. Deuteronomy 138, it says Moses was told by God to encourage Joshua. This was said to Moses by God, not just once, but a few chapters later. He says it again. He says Joshua needs encouragement. Encourage him, help him, strengthen him, repair him. We hear a lot about the mental health being affected by what is happening by the lockdown and by all the situations, the fear and the worry, the anxiety that people are going through. So we all stand in need, like Joshua, we stand in need of being encouraged. Job was an incredible guy and when he was going through his great ordeal, was going through some incredible times. One of his friends spoke to him and he said, Job, your words 
have encouraged those around you. Those who were ready to quit, your words help them and strengthen them. Your words put strength into the people that were stumbling. It kept people on their feet and gave them hope. And there's a whole few verses where this man is told that your words have made a huge difference to the people that have been around you. Today, we have words that we can speak. The Bible says that in our words, there can be life or death. It means we can bring life into somebody or we can so discourage them and so cause them to be downhearted that it just breaks down their inner being. Well, today, what words of you and me got in our hearts? What words have we got for our friends? What words have we got for our neighbors? Are they words that can encourage? We're going through difficult times, but there will be an end and God is with us. And if God is with us and God is for us, who can be against us? We can be like Jesus when he was on the lake. The storm was all around him. The disciples said, wake up. Don't you care that we are about to die? They had kind of given up hope of any help coming to them. And Jesus just stood up in the boat and said, peace, be still. And the storm stopped. Many storms all around us. We need to have a storm in our hearts because God is our help in a time of trouble. He is our peace in a time of anxiety. There is nobody like God for strengthening, encouraging, and repairing. We have these words within us. The Bible says that now God dwells within us. Let this coming time be a time when we speak words that will cause men and women to be so greatly encouraged that they will give glory to you. Just before I close, I'd like to say good morning to my sister Cheryl. She's in Bristol and I love her greatly. So, Chair, the Lord bless you this morning. What I would like to do now, I would like to play a song. It's called The Blessing. Many of you will have heard it. I don't think my sister will have heard it. So, sis, these words in this song I give to you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you this morning.